matemática. Welcome to this practical on chicken mornay and bread cases. Uh, the first thing I want you to do after you've set up your workspace with all your equipment is to complete your mise en place. So that involves uh, creating clouté out of onion, brumiring some onion, crushing some garlic, chopping some parsley, uh, clarifying butter, cutting the chicken into strips, and making the bread basket. So that is the mise en place in total. I'll go over it again. We're going to do an onion clouté, some brumoire onion, crushing garlic, clarifying butter, chopping parsley, cutting chicken into strips, and making the bread baskets. Okay, the mise en place, the clouté. So we'll get one onion, half will be transformed into the clouté, which is studded with cloves, and the other half are brumoire. So here we go. Cut the end off, both ends in half, and peel. So the clouté, as I said, it is studded with cloves, so basically it's quite a traditional element and it helps infuse the milk, which will in turn make our bechamel out of later down the track. So you just stud it in there like so. Now often you use multiple onions with uh, a whole lot more cloves than this, but just to get you in the swing or the idea of things, that is what a clouté will look like. The other half of onion I turn into brumoire. So I'm just using the tip of the knife and going all the way bar 5 mil from the end so it stays in one piece. And then I turn it horizontal and I just brumoire as fine as you can possibly get. Okay, continuing on with that mise en we need to chop this parsley quite fine so you need to wash that. Squeeze the excess water out, bunch it together, help, help by the side of your knife to try and pack it really tight. And just use the claw grip. If you can get down close, you can see where the knuckle is tucked. Oh, sorry, the fingertip is tucked in away from where the knife blade will hit the bench. And I need to find as really fine. Bring it together. This can just keeps the pressure. You don't have to put much pressure on there, it just holds that knife tip on it. This one just levers it up and down like that. Okay, when we're working with green herbs and if you're chopping green herbs really finely, you'll notice that they will leave a stain. So you can even see it on the board um, if you're chopping large quantities. And if I was going to mix that through a white sauce like we will do to today in a bechamel, then it'll turn stain your bechamel green. So we need to wash that. You can do it in a clean chucks. Just place your ingredients or your parsley in the middle. In the middle, bundle it up just like so, twist it into a little bonbon and then under running cold water. Just soak it up, soak it up, soak it up and then twist it quite firmly and you'll notice that a lot of the green will soak out. Soak out. And what you'll be left with Just some nice dried chopped parsley, like so. Yeah. A little bit of salt if you need to. Okay, another element, say if you don't have pre grated cheese, you'll need to grate it. So a little block like that using the big teeth over here, just with a flat hand. Okay, we've got the chicken now. The chicken's probably the most, you know, potentially hazardous food. So just remember that you sanitize your work area, you, you clean your hands fresh, your knife blade is nice and shiny and, and clean. So just chop this up quite fine. It's going to go into quite a small basket. So this needs to be cut into small chunks, about one centimeter at the, at the largest. What I've produced here is some clarified butter. So basically, clarified butter is clear butter. So you get solid butter, melt it down in the microwave or on the stove top, and then you let it uh, settle. And if you come up close with the camera, you can see that there'll be a line of white stuff down the bottom, which will settle at the bottom, and the yellow fat above that. We really only want this yellow fat, the clear stuff. That's what we're going to use to uh, spread our um, 
bread with. Okay, we've got the white bread. We just need to take the edges off that and then rolling pin it, brush it with the clarified butter into the muffin trays and into the oven. So remove the edges just with the bread knife. You don't need to put much weight on there. Those teeth will cut through there with ease, just like using cut wood. Back and forth, back and forth, no pressure. Time. And basically, the, the bread basket is sort of like a pastry base and it will harden like a crouton. Uh, the, the clarified butter will help flavour it and not just flavour it, give it that golden texture and also crunch. So, we'll get these nice and flat. Okay, remember we just want that clarified butter, so when I pour it, if you come over closer, you'll notice that the white stuff sits at the bottom there, we don't want that, so we just stop it like so. And then I have some beautiful clarified butter. I'm going to brush it onto this bread. Cutter. Now you take notice that the cutter needs to be larger than the actual muffin tops because you have to take into account the actual side. So you need this to be a basket, therefore they need to be larger than the top circumference of the muffin tray. Like so. So we use the cutters to cut the bread. Look like eyes. Now press them into there. The oven is preheating to 180 degrees. These in the oven will take 10 to 15 minutes in 180. So along with our prepared bases, we have our, if it can come in closer, we have our crushed garlic, our chopped parsley, our brumoire onion, and our clu uh, clouté of onion. Okay, we're going to make the bechamel. So bechamel is a white sauce, so it's basically a mornay without cheese. So you start off by infusing the milk, we have our milk into a small thick base saucepan. We're going to put the clouté in there and onto a nice low heat. We just need another small pot. And on the low heat, we're going to make our roux. So the roux is the thickening agent or the base for this bechamel. A roux is spelled R-O-U-X. And we have three forms, a white, a blonde, and a brown, depending on how long you cook that butter out, and sorry, the butter and flour. So the butter will tend to go brown the longer you cook it with, uh, cook it. So we have that, we're going to melt butter. So a roux consists of equal parts butter and equal parts flour. Okay, now that the butter is tending to like melt, I'm just going to add the flour. Just need a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon, always use appropriate equipment. You come over here, and sit. So it'll come together, and you really want it to sit cooking off the sides of the pot. You'll see it cook off the sides of the pot. And it is really important that. You do cook that flour out and cook the starchiness out so that you don't get that floury flavour in your end result. You don't want to cook it so much that it colours, just enough so it cooks that stale starchiness of the flour out. So at this stage we've got the two elements, I've got the, the milk heating up on a supple little well and boil it so it overflows. We just want it to infuse and just heat up lightly. And I have my roux. So they're the two elements that make the bechamel. Gradual, I mean a little bit at a time. And I'll just stir that. Just make sure you can see. You'll stir it. Just stir it, stir it quite vigorously and you'll see it start to bind and start to take and it'll start to cook off the edges again. And we need to get that very smooth, smooth as possible. 
And then once it starts cooking off the edges again, I can combine our next instalment of milk. tend to finish it with a whisk. It gives me the ability to ensure that we finish with a smooth product. To finish this sauce, you're going to need to add salt and pepper. White pepper, a little bit, very, po um, very potent white pepper and salt. Put that aside off the heat and we'll make a katouche. A katouche We'll sit above that on the liquid and prevent a skin from forming. So the katouche, you just need grease proof paper or glad bait. Uh, it just needs to be uh, big enough so it covers the circumference of the pot surface. So, yep, that's big enough. Well, it's really big enough. So all I do is fold it in half, bang, and fold it in quarters, bang. Keeping in mind the middle of the paper. So the middle is here, so if I unfold it, that is the middle, back in quarters, and then I'm going to fold it into a triangle. I'm going to fold it into another triangle. This is still the middle. You don't want to lose track of the middle. And you fold it again, and you fold it again until you're left with something that resembles one of those really fast aeroplanes, Concorde. So that is basically the fundamentals behind a katusha. All I'm left to do is gauge where the middle of the pot is. So I just gauge where the middle is, like so. And with my fingers here, when I unravel this, it should look like a circle. And I'll call that a katouche. That'll sit on top of the bechamel and prevent a skin forming. and plus, we've done our bechamel, we're basically in the stages of finishing off. So all I have to do is cook the chicken, uh, combine it with our, our bechamel, fill our baskets, put a little cheese on top, into the oven, and that's it. Hunky dory, Bob Girardi. So the chicken, a little bit of oil, but I've got this clarified butter uh, left over so I can use that. I don't want to waste. You guys can use oil. I'll just have this left over. Into my oil, I'm going to place some onion and garlic. Once that is infused and you extract some of those beautiful aromatics, I can add the chicken. At this stage you can turn the heat up because the chicken will produce a lot of moisture in the pan. Okay, with the, the recipe that you have, you'll yield almost 500 mils of bechamel. You're only going to require to use 200 of that. So I want to collect 200 of you and the other 200 you use to So the finishing touches, cheese, fromage, just a nice little pinch on top, that's going to melt, caramelise and give it an intense flavour, or a more intense flavour. That is it, in the oven, 5 minutes, 180, Bob Jones station. I always harp on about presentation, it's one of the most important elements of serving food to a guest, yeah? Obviously eat with your eyes first. So presenting these, I use a butter knife to get them out of this tray. The tray is quite hot. Onto a prepared platter. Now, these could be used as a shared entree for four people. So you have one, two, three, four on that. And the simple is getting a pinch of cayenne pepper, cayenne, and just going like that. 